understanding map structure is imperative in succeeding in playing the GOATS vs GOATS mirror matchup. In today's video, we will be looking at Nepal Shrine and Gibraltar to show parallels between the two maps to identify that some concepts in Overwatch are not specific to a singular map, but universal concepts. With that being said, let's get straight into Nepal Shrine. So in the GOATS v GOATS matchup on this map, most teams will initially path through main, go through the center of the map, and then meet on point and fight for control over the point. When most fights are lost on this map, it's usually due to the cause of frontline taking poke and being pushed back, causing their backline, mainly Zen, to be pushed back on the stairs, where sightlines are poor because he's on a choke uh, on low ground where he can't really see anything because the sightlines are so bad, right? So the reason why he is pushed back is he has to play on point initially on the first fight, right here on the stairs. And then if they're playing here and they get pushed back, the Ryan and Zarya, when I say they, then what does that mean for him? He can't really stay on the point, right? So he's pushed back to these stairs. So instead, what I suggest and what we've been doing on One Point and Mayhem Academy is when we pass through main, we try to take control over this side. It does matter which side you take because the stairs, again, have the same problem on the elephant side. Now, bear with me here. The reason why this is a more optimal way to play the map in taking control of this side is let's say things don't go your way. You take a bit of poke and you're forced to hold shield and back up a little bit. Instead of backing up to the stairs where Zen can't see shit, instead you're f forced to go ahead and rotate here where you're on level ground, your Zen has good sight lines, a good field of view, uh, he's not in a choke, he's not on low ground, right? So then he's still able to go ahead and do pump out damage. Um, let's say if they do try to go ahead and push you, that way it can still be punished. It's not immediately lost. Now, what some teams you might have seen do is once they get pushed here, I say it's un un like you can't retake it again, but what they do is they go around here and they try to retake from here. But usually by this point, the point has unlocked and they usually concede the point because of it, right? So... This is why it's optimal to go ahead and initially push here, have your Rhine uh, come here, and then your Zen pivot on this side. So that in case something goes wrong, you can go ahead and kite back to the other side instead of kiting to the stairs. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, uh, Slime from Vancouver Titans. So they have a different take than I do here. Uh, which I really want to show because it's really interesting. So the concept still lies where they tried the stairs are pretty much the red zone and where most teams usually lose this this uh, part of the map where they lose the first fight. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the way Vancouver does it. So to me, this is one of the most interesting rollouts because it pretty much is so strong that it wins them this this point uh, immediately. So as you can see right now, it's it's really hard to see, but you'll see his outline right now. You will see that Slime is up here. So he rolls out, he's there before Ryan actually, and he's able to go ahead. You won't be able to see it. He, right there, there's the boop. Ryan is in the sky, he's getting booped back. And because of this, Vancouver is able to go ahead and take the space and split the team. So when they do try to retake through this, again, since they're not already on the point and they're on the stairs, when finally you'll see when they try to retake through this without the Rhine, look what happens to Brig. Brig gets immediately, she's right there on the right, deleted, gone. Nothing he can do, right? So it's, it's, really, it's really something to go ahead and think about because I like the way Vancouver does it because it's, a, it's obviously a, a lot better um, than how I do it. Even the way I do it right now uh, works really well. Like we have... In Mayhem Academy, for, for, for example, in a tanks versus tanks matchup, we almost never lost this map on first fight. So uh, we had like a crazy like 80, well, 83% of win rate first fight or, or something like this, right? So now here with um, Vancouver Titans, uh, this is a bit more uh, overpowered with how Slime does it because literally Slime himself is actually carrying this, this part of the first fight, this part of the map. It's, it's pretty insane to think about. And this is something that you don't really get to see on the on the streams, right? On the official Overwatch League stream where it's like hard to catch and hard to look for. But, you know, as a as a coach, when I saw this, I was like, well, that is uh, that is very interesting. But with that, that being said, um, this is not the main focus of this video. It's just something to go ahead and uh, give you some context on this kind of concept because we're going to tackle one of the biggest issues that I feel is happening right now, which is the car wash hold 
on Watchpoint Gibraltar. It has one of the lowest success rates, and a lot of teams just spam do it, and they lose within the first 30 seconds, where there's only, I believe, been one instance where uh, the Atlanta Reign actually successfully did a car wash hold versus uh, Vancouver Titans, but it was also because of, you know, bumper doing bumper things. But um, one case out of, let's say, maybe 15 is, is not a very good uh, indication or a good sample size, right? I want, it's not, not 15, I'd say it's about 10. But still, 10% uh, win rate for the car wash hold, that's, that's not uh, very promising, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the car wash hold right now. So right here, you'll see that most teams are going to go ahead and play two clips of uh, Atlanta in the same match, where they you can see back-to-back, -back, they go ahead and clump up in this little room in a goats v goats mirror they get hard pushed dogman is over here in server so even that means if they do you know come into this room right here like they are right now atlanta is not going to get healing and the other team the other team's ryan is not going to be discorded right or it's going to fade at least because he's in this room where you know it's out of outside of a uh, zen sightline and let's say zen is in the in the room he's very susceptible to getting just hard cleave by the entire team so it's not a good spot to be in but every team just wants to try to spam it uh because uh, I know the reason because uh, back in the day when you know this first started happening, people used to do it versus double sniper, right? Because people were playing uh, DPS comps uh, back in the day, and the reason why uh, people hold here is because you could hold forever with goats. Because right, Widow can't really see anything, Hanzo can't really see anything. Um, it was a it was really easy to get time off the clock. But nowadays in tanks v tanks, you never want to be in a room or in a little space because you just get choked out, massive cleaved, and this is what happens. Look at Super's old charge here. And look at Dogman, like he's, he's, he's not really able to go ahead and, and, you know, get that damage out. So Violet has strength right now, Dogman's was around 60, right? Same thing, we'll go into the next one, you'll see it again. Same exact thing, they're choking themselves out of the room. They're double bubbling push, or sorry, they're bubbling and they're just hard pushing and then cleaving the entire target. And again, look at, look at Super's will charge here at the end. So he, he does die, but look at Pokepo. He's holding shield the entire team, just getting rolled. And Super is at 95 when, or 94 when he dies, right? And Poke was just about to die at 50. So they're just getting massive, massive cleaved in this little room. It's just like a giant meat grinder. And you don't want to put yourself here as a defending team because you have to try to stop the card. So they just, your back's to, to a wall. Your Zen's not getting value. Your entire team's getting cleaved. You get the idea. So now I'm going to show you an alternative to the car wash hold that uh, we did back in Mayhem uh, Academy. So first of all, here you go. This is uh, actually, I'm gonna show you one more example. This is uh, Los Angeles Gladiators, where they go ahead and re they actually realize that they can't hold in uh, the little cubby on the right. So initially they start to back up. So you can't really do this either. This is why I titled, you can't do this either. Because there's such a long distance to the next corner that your shield basically breaks, right? You lose resources, your shield breaks, whatever. You just, it's too long of a distance. You're going to die doing this as well. All right. So now I've gone ahead and shown you what we did on Mayhem Academy and why like this. Now you're going to see how it ties in, what we talked about in Trine. So same thing. You're not on low ground, right? You're not on a slope. Your Zen has a good sight line. He has his back's not towards the wall. It is towards the coast, so it's a bit, it's still a bit uh, risky in that regard. So you always have to make the proactive push, but at least you're not holding car wash here. Okay, so as you can see here, this is good from GLA from pushing from top. So they push from top, and then quickly, as soon as we know they're about to drop, we try to go ahead and wrap around to their side. So we take their side. Now, usually taking their side on multiple maps is not the idea, right? Because most maps are favored for the defender. But here, our objective is to actually push them towards this car wash side. So again, they're on low ground in a, a pretty bad area for, for them in a tanks versus tank area. And then our Zen can go ahead and pivot here and get massive value while their Zen is shooting up a slope. But uh, this is not the only alternative. This is just something I wanted to go ahead and show you. Because you can do multiple things. I mean, you can try to do a crazy high ground hold as well and then drop with cleave. You can do something different and go ahead and buy time that way. But uh, the car wash hold has, sh has proven to be very unsuccessful for multiple teams where they lose a map within the first 30 seconds. But I want to show you again. Look, look how long uh, this lasts, basically. 
when we almost win this fight as well. So we beat in, we get the trends, we get the first kill actually, and then we misplay the fight because Zarya is getting a lot of value on the right. But and so does Zen. Like Zen comes out of trends, it basically does the same thing. Oh, can't really see it. But uh, what happens is we hold this first part of the map for an entire two minutes, let alone 30 seconds. So it's really something to think about when playing the GOATS versus GOATS matchup. And I hope more teams kind of fade away from this uh, car wash hold as it's just suboptimal. And with, you know, the sample size that we have from official matches, let alone scrims, because I'm sure in scrims, it's the exact same way. Because, you know, we played, we played versus teams that did the same exact thing. And it was easy. And that's why I developed this strategy instead, which was holding this side. Because, again, that concept is universal, where we can actually do something with our Zen. Um, and we're not in a small area to just get meat grinded by goats. So, yeah, this was my take on Watchpoint Gibraltar and the universal concept of uh, understanding map structure and terrain. And, yeah, I hope more teams uh, look at this. And I'd, I'd love to get any feedback and uh, would love to discuss this in the comment section down below. But yeah, again, you can join my Discord where I do offer also private coaching if you have any uh, requests for that. And uh, make sure to check out my Twitter and Twitch where I stream every day. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.